Certains jours de chance. Top model, singer, first lady of France, Carla Bruni has already had several lives. At 52, she's back with some new songs, gathered in an album written during lockdown. Car chaque rencontre, c'est peut-être un ange qui se montre. Et alors, car à ne pas tomber amoureux. Carla Bruni, hello. Hello. Thank you for being with us. So this is your sixth album, simply called Carla Bruni. Is this the album that resembled you the most? This album is probably very close to me. Um, because when I wrote it, um, everything came as a movement. I mean, the songs are not coming from something I would think. And they would come only through emotions. And also the recording process was like that. And we were all confined, you know, for three months. So it was a very strange year. And this album is, is the result of it, even though it doesn't talk at all about what we've been through and what we're still going through. There are 13 songs on the album, 17 on the um, uh, collector's version. Your first original compositions since um, uh, Little French Songs seven years ago. How did you get back to writing? Um, you know, I was touring for about two years because I had made an album of covers with David Foster. And the last concert was in um, September 2019. So we came back from Seoul and it was the last date. And uh, I started writing in November. Probably, you know, all this touring life gives you sort of like a bunch of memories and you just want to write, you know, about it. Quelque chose nous dit que c'est perdu Que l'on va s'adorer sans issue Et que l'on va se croquer à un mal temps Quelque chose obstinément Laquelle est en ce quelque chose C'est la question que tout se pose Qu'est-ce tout quelque chose là Quel est ce bijou d'ici pas The first single is called Something. Uh, it starts with those words I'm translating in, into English. Something tender as risen. What is, uh, does this uh, something mean to you? Well, this something can be absolutely anything. So, um, but it is something related to desire and love, I would say. Uh, you wrote those songs during lockdown. How did you get through this difficult time? We went through lockdown. Um, we were quite lucky because we were in the south of France and also both my man and myself, we had some work to do. So we could actually work, you know, And uh, in between that and uh, the cooking and helping the children for homeschool. Tricky part. <laughs> Homeschooling. Um, so, you know, the work was like a, an incredible shelter, you know, against anxiety, against this fear. The pandemic has many repercussions on the cultural world. Are you worried and how do you see the future? I'm very worried for the cultural world. I'm very worried about any type of performance, you know, and uh, I don't know what will happen to us if we cannot perform anymore and we cannot go on stage anymore. Um, I'm only praying for, for them to find uh, a remedy. Uh, yet this album is quite cheerful and light. Uh, the song Petit Guépard, for instance, is like, um, I would call it a small little tale. Yes. Uh, why is it important to stay positive in those troubled times? It's even more important in troubled times, as much as one can, you know, to be as joyful and light as we can, you know. And Le Petit Guépard is, um, is a song about freedom and about some wildness that we have and that we cannot control. So it's a song about, you know, not everything can be domesticated. C'était au début de l'hiver Par un dimanche ensoleillé Que j'ai croisé mon petit guépard Enchaîné, enchaîné Il était debout dans sa cage Comme un joli petit fauve blessé et j'ai senti trembler sa rage, sa beauté, sa beauté. Euh, 
For the track for your L'Amore, you also sing for the first time in Italian alongside your sister, the actress Valeria Bruni Tedeschi. What was it like to sing with your sister? Well, you know, it was a great pleasure for me to sing with my sister because she's, she's a fantastic um, actress. And so she's actually slamming the song, you know, not really singing it. Uh, well, she really liked that song. I mean, she was so enthusiastic about it that I said, would you like to, you know, to sing on it? And she said, yeah, bingo. So uh, it was a great pleasure and a good fun also. Voglio Voglio sentire il precipizio e la vertigine. Voglio l'amore. Voglio toccare ed assaggiare la sua origine. Do you play your songs to your husband, Nicolas Sarkozy? Is he a, a big fan? Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he is a big fan, or, or, or maybe he's a big liar, but it looks like he's a big fan. No, I believe he likes my music. I'm, you know, I'm lucky because he doesn't really like all music, you know? I mean, you know, if I was playing metal music, for instance, he would actually not like it so much. <laughs> it makes me wanna cry and wanna love and wanna die because without you nothing's right. Um, what are your memories of your years as a first lady of France? Do you have any anecdotes maybe you would like to share? Well, those years were very um, interesting years, um, exceptional years, um, because there's not so many um, times in life of where you get to be in such a place, uh, you know, being near a man that is in such a position. Uh, if I think of an anecdote that I could tell you, no, I mean, it was just about meeting so many interesting people. Most people were anonymous people and people that were working a lot and helping other people. I met so many brilliant, incredible, incredibly generous people. And then some people were, were like legends, you know? I mean, it was uh, fascinating for me to meet, you know, Nelson Mandela or the Queen of England and <laughs> or Michelle and Barack Obama. Anyway, it was just very interesting. And for a person like me, who is like just a songwriter, it was incredibly exceptional. And uh, also I got to meet, you know, the love of my life. So um, I guess I'm a lucky girl. You were amongst the most famous top models in the 90s. Um, we saw you recently on the catwalks recently. It was in 2018 for a Gianni Versace a tribute alongside Naomi Campbell, Claudia Schiffer, Cindy Crawford. What do you keep from those years in the fashion world? Well, what I keep from the fashion world is um, friendship and links. And uh, the fashion world is like a family to me. And uh, I know it changes all the time and it always needs new faces, so I'm not a model anymore at all, you know. But it doesn't really matter. They're still part of my life and I'm still part of their life. It was a very joyful time of my life. A lot of work and a lot of fun. Uh, it has been a quite complicated time the past few years in the fashion industry regarding the Me Too movement uh, and all the... Uh, accusation of sexual yeah. misconducts in, in, in this industry. Uh, what is your take on the Me Too movement? Well, I do believe it was very necessary, you know, and uh, it's impossible to tolerate abuse and it's impossible to always keep silence. Uh, you know, Me Too is like a scream. And uh, I understand uh, it's a new movement, you know, it's a new kind of feminism and that will not uh, let a woman or a man being abused and, 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 and feeling bad about it as if it was its fault. So that's the unbearable part of the abuse and me too is trying to put an end to this. Perverted people will always exist but I believe we must fight it and you know union makes strength. So I'm not a me too girl because you know I'm 50 years old and I'm coming from another time but I, um, I support them as a woman, also as a mother of a girl. And uh, I'm teaching, I'm trying to teach my daughter to, you know, to be careful. But the new generation is really different. I can feel it with my son, you know, my son is 19 years old and he's so respectful of, of, his, of his girlfriends, you know, and uh, uh, so I can see it's different already. It's uh, maybe less spontaneous, but more respectful. 
On your Instagram page, you celebrated your 52nd birthday with a video of you dancing. And as a caption, you wrote 50 years old or 50 years young. Uh, getting older doesn't seem to scare you at all. Well, getting old scares me a lot. And uh, <clears throat> I also dislike very much this time that is coming now, you know, that will be also, you know, ended by death. No, it's not the funniest time. No, getting old is not so nice, is it? And the, the worst thing about getting old is that it's a lucky thing. So it's a very contradictory feeling, you know, as I would say, I wish I didn't get old, but I wish I get old, so I'm alive, you know. Thank you so much, Carla Thank, Thank you. It's a pleasure. Regarde, regarde, il nous arrive un grand amour qui nous emporte sans retour, sans pardon, sans pourquoi. Et alors, voilà le grand amour, celui 